Hey, hey, trying to figure this out to where I can see where I'm live on Facebook. Good evening. There we go. All right, hey, what's up everybody? How are we doing this evening? Um, just kind of making sure that everything's coming up. I'm gonna see if I can see this all in real time and be able to answer questions as they come across as well. Uh, very grateful for y'all to be here with me and I'm gonna go ahead and get things kind of going. I'm gonna start off with some masks. This evening, uh, we're gonna do some. Uh, we're gonna do two projects. I'm gonna do uh, the dropper, and then I'm also going to do the guitar. So I know a lot of you guys have been uh, waiting to see how these two items are done. So I'm gonna get to it um, as I'm working. I'm also uh, filming with a camcorder so that I can add this hopefully to YouTube later so that it can be useful for some of y'all. Um, uh, welcome everybody. I'm glad everybody's joining. Uh, I'm not really good at just sitting in a room and talking so I'm going to try to get to it. Um, I'm going to kind of warm up this evening doing some masks. I went and got a few masks ready. They're all nice and soaked. They're They've been pre-washed in hot water. Um, uh, they soaked for over 20 minutes in soda ash solution. Um, uh, so with masks, I like to, you know, I like to hand them out to people here and there. You know, the kids take them and lose them at school sometimes. And, uh, you know, they just kind of come in handy nowadays. You know, current events being as they are. Um, starting to see everybody come, coming up and posting up comments. Um, thank you. Thank you all for uh, making it. So, all right. With the face mask, I like to do uh, little bundles with a few different colors at a time. So, I usually get a bag, like a bag of 50 of them off of Amazon. And uh, they usually come in like bundles of 50 for like 30 something dollars. The great thing to get, especially if you want to sell them for like five or ten bucks, or just hand them out. But usually I'll do them in little batches of five, you know, stretch them out a little bit, line them up. <clears throat> I did this the other night on uh, the live video that some people weren't able to make, which is unfortunately. But uh, we're making up for it tonight. Not going to do the mushroom this time, but uh, hopefully I can continue to do this next week. And you'll uh, add that one to the list. So now that I've got five face masks, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, draw some little squiggly lines and just kind of warm up with uh, pleats, kind of get my fingers going. So I'm just gonna kind of take a marker, draw a few lines, kind of make it all kind of different ways. You know, no particular pattern on this one. It's just going to be a two color and it's just going to be separated by one line. Two color masks, five at a time. All right. Uh, for this, I'm going to need uh, some sinew, a little bit of uh, rubber bands. And I've got that right here. Grab a little handful of rubber bands, kind of just throw them down on the table. It'll go all over the place. A lot of people use string, but uh, I don't. I like rubber bands. For this, I'm not going to use the pliers, uh, the tweezers that I usually use. I'm just going to kind of get these, add a little bit of a fold, and then I'm just going to pleat along these lines. Let's see if I kind of keep along and see how this looks. I'm not going to be able to zoom on this, but maybe I can come up closer on the table. 
And really all I'm doing is just following this line all the way across with these, you know, quarter inch to half an inch high pleats. They're going to try to be kind of uniform. You know, some people like them clean. Some people like them not so clean. It's really up to your taste and your style. But I get across one. I'm just going to go ahead and butt up the next one. And then I'm going to continue going across my lines. Just kind of follow that line, do some pleats, get some pleats in. <clears throat> I really appreciate you guys all tuning in. Looks like we got a good 25 people in right now. I appreciate it. <clears throat> We're just going to continue following this line as it goes. It's going to get a little messy here and there. You can spend a whole lot more time and get it going you know to keep it straight sometimes it'll bow up like that and then you just kind of tame it down show the fabric who's boss you can kind of press down keep it all together but we're going to continue through even though it's getting a little scary and we're going to keep going i'll show you a quick little fix all for that since it's damp it can kind of sit there so i can continue across keep getting my pleats and we're going to finish up strong Right there, look at that. They're kind of small pleats, but you know, they'll all kind of come together. You know, create nice, nice crisp line. You can see it right there. Go ahead and pull out some sinew. It's like I snapped that line. I want to clean up this line. Get up underneath there. Get across there. And just push down. And as long as I keep a flat surface area, I can go all the way up underneath there and really not even disturb the fabric. Get that kind of set and snug. Go over it one more time, two more times, three more times. You can do it as many times as you want to make sure that you get a nice secure spot. So now we got this all kind of tight in there. I'm going to put my hand down. I feel down here at the end of the line here on my knuckle right here and then I also press down with my thumb knuckle to kind of pinch them in at the same time as pushing down with my hand and I get as close as I can to it and I just pull I get a nice cinch in there I don't want to pull it too tight to where it snaps but I'm just going to get it nice and snug so that the, the line knows where it's at go looks like I can pull that one more time uh, it'll start to slip you'll feel the wax kind of slip if you go too far uh, it's all really well pressed together we're gonna go over we're gonna wrap it up a couple more times to get a nice crisp defined line and I wrap it three times and I apply the flat pressure down and I pull just basically how I'm doing my lines <clears throat> now the line kind of came off a little bit but it's okay we got pretty much center mass this is gonna do nice crisp lines you make sure that it you, you can just tie it down and cinch it down even further really press it down <sighs> pull it to where right before it snaps and it'll create so much tension in between that line in there the dye will not want to travel in there. Now usually I'll do these masks, um, uh, everything I dye, a liquid dye. So I like to let my fabric dry out for like a good week or two before I even put dye on it. So y'all are in luck, because I tied up a few masks last week and I've had them kind of getting ready. Show that line who's boss, Kara, I am. There we go. I got it nice and cinched down. We're going to go ahead and clip that. Now, there's a couple things you can do. You can either just belt them down. We'll do that on one side. We'll just kind of get these all flat out as much as we can. <clears throat> nice and clean. And we will just double band. Put it down. You can put your knuckles down, your, your forefinger and your middle finger or something, and just set that down and slide right underneath there. 
as long as you've got surface contact with the table, you're going to get a good contact point. Now I'm just going to leave that like that. I could come in here with a tighter one if I'd like to, with a triple band even. Kind of clean up all these little, little straps right here. We'll kind of press those down a little bit. Get underneath there. Just kind of secure those up so they don't get all hangly dangly. All right, let's see here. All right, cool. So we're going to go ahead and start. That's the win. On this other side, I'm going to do a scrunch. I'm going to open up each one of these pleats and just kind of throw some fabric in there and kind of make it look ridiculous and just kind of bunch it up to where it's like a big wad, but I'm still going to try to keep it flat on the table as I'm doing so so that I get more surface area when I apply my dies later. Just kind of push them in there in between those pleats. You can do this this way, you can do it that way, but pretty much all you want to do is make it look kind of brainy. You know, just make it look like the top of your brain. And get a nice tight connection on there. And I'll come around <clears throat> and we'll just kind of keep it there. Now I have another tool that I use that I don't break out all the time. Nice little steel block. This thing's pretty heavy. Don't drop it on your toe. If I can set that here, just kind of let that sit flat. <clears throat> and I'll come through with my double band from the top. Get my surface area, come underneath, and then I'll, as I let go of this band, I want to press in and press down at the same time to keep that flat surface. All right, I got kind of kept that tail end down, and we'll come down and do that all again. Here we go. So we got our scrunch set up. Let's go ahead and do a triple band. Lock up these laces a little bit. All right. Now, if you see at this line, <clears throat> here and here, if I don't press this fabric this way, we're going to get a spill on the other side of this line and we're going to do it this way. So I'm going to do an X kind of on both sides and pull these corners and these edges away from each other so that when I apply a dye, one color doesn't jump over to the other side. So I'll just get, kind of get snug in there in the corner and we'll pull it away. And right there, that's a cool little trick to kind of keep your line separated and make sure that you don't get a lot of spillage come underneath there and get it from the other side do a nice X so you get pressure all going towards the center so it's all kind of pressed down and towards the center all at the same time right cool now that's not going to really jump across unless it just kind of travels across the sinew but you can press that down into it it's wax it'll stick When I take these bands off sometimes, they bundle up. <laughs> Smooth brains. Well, John, you'll have a cool shirt, man. Smooth, smooth scrunch, man. I think they call that hobo dying. But you got to hold it up upside down. Get these other corners, and we are done with these this mask. And I'll just let it sit out for a few weeks or whatever until it dries up, and I get a good time to get a good batch in. And there we go. Set that off to the side. I got a bunch more masks, but I'm not going to really mess with those again tonight. Y'all kind of got the idea. That's just a good warm up. All right, so we're gonna start off with one of my favorite shirts. This is one of the first designs that I kind of got, kind of got me going in this direction of where I've got, you know, just more designs than I do brains. 
Uh, tonight I'm going to be doing the guitar first. This is the guitar. I use um, uh, shirtspace.com to order all my blanks and uh, told them I was doing this live video and they said, okay, we'll send you some shirts. So show them some love. You know, you can get uh, free shipping at $59 if you check out shirtspace.com. You know, we're going to go with the uh, comfort colors that they sent me. This is a medium. So I'll have a medium guitar here in a few days. Now, before I get into it, I gotta draw this out. So pull out my handy dandy marker and then a flat edge. And I catch an angle on my shirt that I want my direction to go. I kinda like it going from, you know, the shoulder down I did a whole bunch of these recently for, or earlier last year for uh, Love on Hate. So they like those. There's still a few of those on that website. If you want to check out loveonhate.com, look up your homie. All right. I get a nice little spot right here where I, I want the bottom pickup to kind of, kind of sit. So go ahead and draw a spot where my bottom pickup's going to be. And this is going to be the one side and we're going to stop out right here move it over a little bit kind of get a little bit of an angle because i guess they're not straight you know like a pole they kind of got a little bit of a taper as they go down the neck Let's try to catch that a little bit there we go now this side dips down a little bit higher than the other than the this one side you'll see what I mean here whenever I get to draw on I, I don't know what they're called guitar guys you know there are a couple guitarists in here you can tell me what what the little fins of the guitar are you know just kind of get the little fun curve going on I'm just gonna freehand these I don't ever really do a stencil I always just kind of got a fluid motion that I've gotten kind of accustomed to so we're gonna just kind of throw that in there. A little curve right there. Kick it out. And we're going to curve it around over here. So our spot will go for the knobs. Draw that in there. Now I'll use that as a point to uh, die later. So we'll kind of come in here. Yeah. Draw this out. We got a cool little shape to it. I don't know the guitars that well. I just think they look fucking cool. So it's got a fun shape to it. Make sure it's got kind of meet at the same spot get a little round body and these are going to be our <clears throat> our outside lines uh oh she'll be okay but anyway it's a good outside line I'm going to follow those lines as the second part of what I do now I'm going to get to the inside I'm going to pull out a, another little smaller ruler a lot of protractor because it's get cool squares on there. Now I'm gonna do the bottom pickup. The bottom pickup's a bit larger. Do it try to keep it even down the middle. If you want, you could kind of you know center out your guitar and just kind of put like a little dotted line down the middle of it so you know exactly kind of which which direction you're going so you can get a little perpendicular on there. Went a little a little wide on one side, so I'll make up for it over here. Come back down, give it some cool space. Give it some space. And we'll make that line a little bit shorter so it does like this little kind of trapezoid thing right here. I guess that trapezoid something. It's a shape. It's quadrilateral for sure. Go. Okay. Thanks, Rochelle. So the horns. 
Yeah. So I'm going to do a couple more of these right here. And these are going to be individually tied. Kind of try to get those square. Just little rectangles. And we're just going to do just a couple pickups. Probably another one up towards the top sometime. So I'm just going to put in those. Now I'm going to come over here and throw in some circles. The knobs just kind of get an idea of a circle. I'm going to come in and we're going to use the mandala fold really to get these knobs in there. Here we go. So you guys can see this. Nice. Okay, cool. You can kind of see it backwards. That's okay. I'm going to kind of step off screen real quick. A little refreshment. Alright. Now that we've got the guitar, we kind of want to get a good idea of what we want to do afterwards. So a lot of times I'll kind of come out here and then color out just a little bit. I use, you know, Crayola washable markers. They'll come off in the wash. Soda ash in the shirt kills, kills this stuff. But I think I want to go with like a teal. That cool outline. We're going to get, you know, kind of a good idea where we want all this to go. I, I'm not looking at a guitar. I'm kind of going by memory here. Throw that up in here. We're going to make this some, some white space right here. We're going to hope that we can train this die to not run in there. And uh, when I dye the guitar that I've got dried up later on tonight, I'll kind of explain that. And then so we'll just kind of color across here, kind of indicate where we want this die that we want to go to. So it's kind of fun. You can just sit here and color this up all the time. I've been having a lot of fun recently. I got one of these uh, Wacom tablets for digital painting and drawing. I've been touching up some of my pieces and uh, going in and, you know, playing around with it. Just like I'm learning how to paint all over mm -hmm. again. Yes, Adam, I, I do. Uh, uh, this is... Uh, Mr. Riggle's uh, Joe Rogan Tapestry itself. If anybody knows Joe, you know, tell him that I've got the tapestry and that Nathan Riggle made it. It's, it's fucking beautiful. Um, still working on uh, some of the trades accompanied with what I got this with. Very, very grateful to get this. It's, it's been an amazing, amazing tapestry to have up. It has a lot of energy, a lot of good energy. It's fucking flawless. Like, if you really get in there and look at it, this tapestry is really thick. I was really kind of shocked by how, how thick it was. But it's, it's, it's freaking cool. It's fine, a little brown right here. Let us know that this is the neck. Here we go. We're going to go, we're going to kind of map out the inside of this so that I remember to do a, like a, a lighter inside, do a little bit of art to this, right? And it's just kind of fun to color on a shirt. I really wish the tie dyeing was this easy sometimes that, you know, I could just kind of draw on it and just make it whatever I want it to be. You know. Cool. Here we go. And we're gonna make those. Let's find a little bit of gray now. Gray for the pickups. No, that's not, that's, that's a dead marker. Of course, I'm going to put it right back in its box. Because, you know, that's what you do with dead markers. Oh, I'll know that those are going to be great. So, all right. We got our shirt. We got our guitar. Mm -hmm. Kind of turn it around. So everybody can see it. This shirt's going to rock. This one's going to be fun. Yeah, dude, like, if you look at the, the digital pads, they're really not that expensive. You can get them on Amazon. If you want to hit me up later on, I'll get you a, an affiliate link. You know, help me out. I'll help you out. 
you know, but uh, it, it's, it's been a lot of fun. I'm using it for my NFTs and I'm adding the like digital art aspect and then kind of offering up the uh, physical piece later on with, with it to whoever buys it. It's a lot of fun. So we're going to start with these five inside ties. They're going to be kind of our first things that we attack. A lot of people like to tie it from the outside and work their way in. But I'm going to get on in there. We're going to flip this shirt all which way and whatever. Usually keeps its form. We'll see here. So we're going to start with the circles. I'm going to pinch this right here in half. Get it in half again. And just kind of treat it like it's a mandala. Let me pull out my tweezers real quick. Oh, I use my tweezers for everything. Like these are chisel tip. Just basic tweezers. They're not sharp to where that they're gonna poke holes in my fabric, so it's great. I love them. They're almost like a second hand, second hand sometimes. So I can use this, kind of throw it in there, get it nice and tight. We're gonna do a nice little airplane fold. I'm not gonna do a mandala on this, but you know, I totally could. You know, that would be kind of a rad little design. Just make sure that all these lines line up. I'm gonna do the airplane fold, and we're just gonna, you know. Break it off something like that. Make sure that we got the lines pretty much lined up. It'll pretty much make a circle on the front and the back. And grab just left of this line. Slide your sinew in there. Wrap it a few times. Get a good pinch. And I like to grab it on both sides of the line and then pinch it in my hand to a sweet spot where it's not slipping and I'll wrap it around a couple more times get good tension on it All right three is usually good enough for me there we go just kind of let that guy sit up here this all kind of gets scrunched in together here soon. And you kind of find a way that that's pleating. It'll be easier and less resistance if you just go ahead and take that up in that and it catch your half. This one looks like it's going to be kind of like oblong. So we're just going to try to get as clean of a little mandala fold as we can in here. A little airplane fold real quick. You know, I'm not looking for perfection. I'm just trying to highlight the idea that there's a knob there or that there should be a knob there even if it's not specific to exactly the style of guitar it'll look cool you know so it's up that's not a bad idea that, that that sounds like a pretty cool little set of tweezers to check out i'll have to check out the opals that's uh what profound I can look up their Instagram. Thanks, Adam. I mean, that's the pro move is throwing, you know, that dry marker back in the batch. You know, hopes and dreams that may, you know, get humid enough out here. I don't know. Now, with these little pickups, there's a couple ways that you could do this. You can kind of find your own way. But uh, I like... To kind of make it kind of simple and quick so since I've got two um, uh, parallel and perpendicular pickups I'm gonna go ahead and bunch these up like this and get a good half fold and it'll stand up nice right look at that it stands up nice and I'll grab this other one and do the same thing and I'm just gonna bring them up into the middle and I'm gonna match them up best as I can, as square as I can. All right, there. Just kind of flip that out like that. Make sure that you've got, you can double fold these and I'll show you real quick. It looks like you just got two folds on top of it. Now, you could fold this again in half like hamburger style instead of that but I'm going to take advantage of these corners and 
and I'm just gonna take my tweezers and put a 45 degree angle right there and I'm just going to give that as my first pleat, right? Come around over here to the corner. And I'm going to make that my pleat height. So all of my other lines are going to run perpendicular to this. And I'm going to fold them all up together. And then hope that I get a good enough distance so that I can get another clean 45. And it looks like I can... And I'm just gonna get another 45 and then get it from the other side and pinch that down. And then as long as the lines all match up, all like that, and you got your corners up at the peak, you'll, uh, you'll have a nice clean 45, which will translate into a 90 degree angle, which is just fun, especially when they match up so nice like that. That's about a inch height for a pleat so we're using all kind of different heights and different folds to accomplish our goals as we go along there we go go get a nice tight cinch on there wrap it around again secure it do the same thing every time and it'll get you'll get used to it you know three times Gives you that nice clean white line when you pull it. And if you have trouble with your arms, you can you know pull your hand all the way the closest up to to your knuckles and just kind of turn your shoulder out. You're not really using arm strength to do that. You can kind of push with your left hand away from you to where you're kind of like pushing against. So you're not really like pulling. So it's not as much. Um, uh, strength and then you just kind of torque your shoulders and you can pull back you're just pulling your arm back and let your shoulders do the work it should help you get a little more tension on these lines when you're trying to tie them tight uh, yes I did uh, 45 on each corner I just got so lucky that it matched up because I don't know I've done this a couple times and I've just gotten lucky all right, so we're starting to see it's kind of starting to bunch up, but that's okay. As long as this corner stays firm and all this, we're good. We can kind of match up our other corners like that and then get a nice defined line that we can follow that matches up on the front and the back. So we'll be okay there. Now, since I did kind of, what is this? Is this a freaking trapezoid? Like, what is that shape? What is that, a trapezoid? Like, when it's, like, shorter on top, longer on bottom? I don't know. Um... I'm gonna fold that the other way. We're gonna go kind of lengthwise, and as long as it's perpendicular, usually it's gonna match up. And you can kind of put it up against a light, catch your corners, and adjust. As long as your corners match up right there, you can put that down with your thumb, push that away from you. There we go. Now, I'm just going to follow this line, and when I get to the corner, I'm going to do kind of the same thing. You'll see, I kind of just like make sure that the lines meet up in that corner, and that will help you get the sharpest angle. As long as this line stays straight as it goes up and down and it pleats, you're going to get a nice clean line. So let's, let's go ahead and get into that real quick. Now, the first fold, you want to make sure that it follows the line on the back and you get that nice and perpendicular. That first fold is very important. It's time I pull out the tweezers because I want to do small folds because I want a sharp, defined line. And I want a little more action in this corner. So I'm going to fold it up and then I, I realize that it's gonna, I'm going to go straight to that corner. So this is going to be a clean pleat. So I'm going to come over here on the other side and I'm going to go ahead and push this line up to get snug up and butt up against this other pleat. And all I do is I pinch it and then I turn. And as long as that matches up, now we're good. See? And I just, you really can't see unless you're doing it. But here, I'm going to go ahead and pull this up like I usually wouldn't. I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. See right there in the corner. I'm just going to keep following that line. 
and then when I get to this other corner, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna kind of turn the turn it like a car. So I'm just gonna turn everything and make sure that that line keeps going straight as I can. Now you can kind of work it where you kind of pull up and then you can pu push back underneath there and make sure that your lines match up. So it works out again. Cool, just another pinch and then I just come over here and then just drag this and pinch it back together and then turn all of it so that it all just kind of goes and follows. Pinch the line all the way and make sure as long as the bottom of it matches up and then you get on this last fold and we're good. Oh, let's see here. There we go. That line matches up on top and the bottom. Now, if anybody feels so generous as to uh, tip the bartender this evening, my PayPal is uh, kydies at gmail.com if you'd like to do a little digital tip jar. It was suggested last week when I was talking about going live that would be cool. So I'm not going to mention it or talk about it again, but if anybody feels so inclined, go ahead. PayPal is uh, kydies at gmail.com, and I really appreciate it. All right, so we got our first one. We're going to go ahead and secure that. We're going to come around, and this is going to be a nice, sharp line. I spent the whole day today setting up the studio to kind of make sure that the kids weren't running in and out. I can kind of focus on what I'm doing and make sure that it doesn't get too crazy. So I appreciate you all for tuning in on this uh, first time. I'm going to try to do this every week. Okay, so I'm opening this back up, pull my sleeves back out, and now I've got my pickups where they want to be. This one's kind of cool because it's like all the way out of the way and it keeps that white right there. Keeps it all in place. Now, next spot, I'm going to tie up this side. I'm going to kind of just kind of come around here and then transition all the way up. Match up the top and the bottom, catch my corner, make sure it's kind of as familiar as it was before. Get them nice and clean and even. I'm going to make these pleats a little bit bigger because i got to go a good distance and I don't want them flying up all crazy. And it kind of adds a cool little, little effect when they're not tiny, super tiny pleats. So you can get color on the bottom and the top and it kind of comes together in the middle and it makes it really cool. I'm going to follow this outside line. I like the, the shirt, this custom colors. It, it's kind of got a, a nice like... Uh, like uh, uh, they're not. It's not super crunchy. It's it's got a little bit of a give, so I can I can push down really tight, and it, it's kind of pushes against. It's kind of springy, but not too springy. So I I feel like these these soak up the dye really well. I've gotten some really good results on these custom color shirts that I got from shirtspace.com. Get your next batch of blanks from them. Tell them I sent you. Maybe they'll send me some more shirts so that I can keep showing y'all how to do some cool stuff. How I do it. So, if you guys enjoy this, like it, share it. I'm going to try to get good at being that unobtrusive YouTube kind of dude. Alright, as we kind of come around, we've just been following this pleat and just making sure that the bottom lines up with the top and kind of coming around. And then this is a, a fun little corner. This, this kind of gets tough. This was a fun learning curve. But if I try to keep these uniform, it should do really well as I go up this side. And uh, if you notice, I always do, I always make sure all my crap is over here on my right side. And then I hold my pleats with my left hand so that I can get a good, I've got a good fluid motion of going around this way. So this, it always, I'll always have this off to my right. Uh, I guess it shows off to like my left on here, but I don't know. I'll figure out how this all translates later when I watch this video. 
Yes, Leanne, thank you. That's uh, kaidies at gmail.com. John, you missed everything so far, man. I appreciate you for joining. You're on that hippie time. I felt bad because I was like, oh, man, I'm five minutes over seven. Oh, these guys are never going to forgive me. Oh, God. I don't think anybody wants to mention that I was late. So thank you. Thank you. All right. Now, you notice I've started coming up the neck. I'm going to try to keep these as flat and even as possible so that when I come down the other side, it, it doesn't ripple out too much and they, they kind of come together a little bit easier. The more uniform your pleats are, the happier you're, you're going to be. You, you won't get leakage underneath your sinew lines. Like sometimes I'll like, I'll get into trouble in this middle part where it curves and sometimes those pleats won't be as high. So right there, I'll get a little bit of uh, slippage where the die will come up underneath there. But if you've got nice uniform square lines, you got a lower chance of that die sneaking underneath. Um, uh, uniformity is good. Keeps the universe in order with all the chaos. Now you can kind of come back across here and pick over your lines. If you see that some of them kind of went one way or the other, you can kind of adjust it. Don't get too strong handed in it because you, you could pull a lot of other stuff out of the way in doing that. You know, chances are if you're plus or minus five over, you're good. Um, uh, if you're, if you want to be sure, you can kind of come up here and use, you know, your, your steel block, run it across there, press it down. You got nice uniformity. Good. Pull my handy dandy sinew puller. That I, you know, this sinew puller, it's so easy. I just, I took out a, a rod, a dowel rod out of the closet and then just cut, you know, like six inches off and I've had it for three years. I don't, I don't need to use a drill. It's, that's a lot of work. So this is, this works for me. If you're, if you're looking for, you know, a sinew puller, go to the closet. Here we go. Now I'm going to stand up again for this one because this is where I'm going to take my hand and kind of <clears throat> push in as I'm pushing down so that everything goes to the center as it all cinches together. It all goes to the center and it gets the most resistance and you get the cleanest lines. I went, I wrapped around four times and now I'm going to put down pressure and I'm using the thumb on my hand and then the, the bones over here on my pinky to kind of keep it all kind of <clears throat> squishing in. As I push down, <clears throat> oh, there we go. All right, it didn't bend or bow or, or chew up or anything over there. So we'll, we'll get in there. We'll we'll take our thumbs and our forefingers and we will pull that all back. Get a nice clean understanding of where we're at. Wrap it up, you know, two or three more times. Pressure, pull, wrap. All oh, right, and it stops. You don't want it to pull and snap. Now, I like to just cut and give myself a little bit of a tail every time on every line. I don't like to transfer over and trade over lines and whatnot. I'm just going to kind of get there and let it do what it do and It, it may be a little more work to unwrap every piece of sinew, but it, it, it's totally worth it. <clears throat> so I'm going to flip around my shirt, and I'm going to come back across the net, and I'm going to try to keep these pleats as uniform as possible so these all line up kind of easily, and it kind of does all the work for you, which I'm, like, the biggest fan of. I mean, my glass name is Shammer Glass, and if anybody's familiar with the military, Shammer is somebody who just really doesn't like to work. Do everything they can to get out of it sometimes. Call me lazy. I'm just trying to live. But anyway, try to keep these lined up as much as possible, and you are going to have nice, crisp, clean guitar lines. And there we go. Now, coming up to this little corner where it curves up, I want it 
I want that to be either at the top or the bottom of this crest and trough action. So if it's down at the bottom, it's cool. I can just go straight into it and hit my curve and try to maintain the height of my pleats. This is a part where it kind of gets a little screwy sometimes and you lose control. But if you keep the pleats as high as the one in front of it, you're going to be good. And then with every, with every one, I'm pushing this line underneath it so that it meets right there. Oh, look smart, not hard. David, do I enjoy tie-dye or glass blowing more? If you were only able to do one, which... Oh, man. Um, that's a really tough question, David. God damn it. Um, I like to mix it up, honestly. I... I really like glass glass got me into art like when i was a kid i always went to art festivals and saw like soft glass and was like oh this is freaking cool i want to i want to play with fire melt my face off it's a lot of fun to play with fire but you know it's a lot of it's a lot of hot work and, you know it's it kind of working in the texas heat kind of turned turned me off the glass there for a couple of years when i found tie-dye it was it's really neat to find something that I could do in the air conditioning. So, I mean, if I had to do it, it depend on where I live. You know, if I lived in Texas, probably want to stick to tie-dye more because it's, uh, so it's really hot. Tamara, right on. Lamp working's freaking cool. You know, if you guys like uh, glass blowing, um, I'm going to be out in Las Vegas. Um, Mike, Mike Mason, if you're, if you're watching or if anybody from the Las Vegas team is watching, you know, throw up the, the dates, but I'm pretty sure it's like, May 15th through the 16th, or 14th through the 16th in Las Vegas. That's going to be fun. But, you know, if I had to choose one, I think I'd choose tie-dye. It's, it's a little chiller. You know, I got a little more creative control. The glass is a, is a bit more difficult and so much more expensive and dangerous. You know, doing tie dye. You know, I I don't I don't think I'm ever gonna stick a rod of molten glass through my hand. So I don't know. May 12th through 16th. Thanks, Marie. I hope it's Marie, not Mary. But it looks like Marie Angelique. I'm 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 really looking forward to it, Marie. Like hopefully we get the chance to like hang out, maybe grab some lunch or something. All right, so we're getting to the end. I've just been sitting here pleating and talking and really not talking about what I was doing, but I'm really just, you know, one pleat in front of the other, you know. It's a, it's a wave, it's a crest in a trough. If you think of it like a, a wave or a signal, you're just kind of compressing a, a, an electrical signal together or whatever. Whatever helps you visualize, you just want the straightest line through your finger and your thumb. All right. So I bowed out a little bit. I'm going to take my tweezers and kind of push these over a little bit. And get it nice and even. And I'm going to pinch it and press down on my forefingers to get the, a good form. <clears throat> so, it so I know it doesn't slide too much <clears throat> when I'm doing this. Here we go. Now, a lot of times this is a little extra sleeve than what I like. So I'm just going to kind of fold that up. And bring it up, take a little, tick a little, little bit there. Go ahead and stick thing in here. Yeah, for those tuning in right now, thanks for being late. You remind me of me in high school. I'm just kidding. I was always on time in high school. I was afraid of all the coaches and all the teachers. I was afraid they were going to throw me out of school. And my mom was going to beat my ass. So, you know, I was pretty punctual. Not going to lie. But that's because I was afraid of my mother. Most people should be. All right. So I got my four, my four wraps. I want to come back here, kind of check my line, make sure everything's cool. We are almost done with this guitar. All we're going to have to do after this is band it up. Now, get a little tension, push down with my thumbs and my pinky. I'm pushing in, I'm squeezing it as I'm pressing down and it's giving me a nice compact line right there that I can work with. There you go. 
get in here, we'll pull these parts apart so that we get a nice channel, nice clean channel, and that we're not rewrapping a loose piece of fabric. Because that sucks when you, you know, got like three or four different lines and you only meant to put one and you're like, oh man. But yeah, I mean, I've shown you this guitar to show you several different ways to tie things. And, you know, if you, if you picked up on it, I was able to get the asymmetrical lines because I kept the shirt flat and I went from one end to the other. And I pre-marked it so I know where my dyes are going to go. I do liquid dyes and I don't use thickener. So it's knowing exactly where this is going to be. You kind of got this. So this is going to be your left arm and your right arm. And you have your collar over here. I'm going to scrunch these up. Then I'm going to come back and then scrunch all this on the guitar together too. Kind of make sure that these sit flat. Make them a nice appropriate pleat height and get in here bang it up a little bit so it adds some texture pull it up fold it back pull it up fold it back it's just like a scrunch it'll add some texture it'll build sh this give these shirts a little bit of character keep our white spot where we want it so we're gonna want that to stay white because I'm put down a little little secret white dye that I get special made you know people always wonder what the white dye is I do not do HWI uh, there's been a couple instances where I've you know poured hot soda ash water on top of something and I'm just like okay cool I was just able to do it faster but uh, I just really like the process of liquid dyes and the way that they, they bleed and they just kind of together, it's, 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 it's really cool. Ice dyes are fun, you know, if you got a bunch of ice and you like that. I like a little bit more control, so liquid dyes, I can, uh, liquid dyes I can control a little bit better. Um, hot dog water, huh Kagan? I, I haven't done that. We've been eating a lot of chicken lately. So I don't have any of that. But it's been tested. And it has been proven that if you add salt, a little bit of oil, and nitrates to your dyes, it's going to help them saturate in. It's going to help it break the surface tension on a dry. I, I do. I do. I, I mixed some reds earlier tonight. I had a little bit of this. I had a few, just, just a few drops into my chem water. It's not like I go and boil a bunch of hot dog. It's just, I liked a little bit of grease. It helps break the surface tension on, on my dyes. It makes it a little bit easier. All right. Now I like to cross a little action right there. Every time I'm scrunching, I'm trying to bring all of the pressure towards the center while trying to keep a nice flat. I want as much surface area as I can still get. And that's what I'm really going for, is getting that nice clean surface area so that my dies don't have a whole lot of space to travel into the shirt so that I get a little, I get better saturation this way just because it's thinner. All right, so it's starting to look, you know, like something cool, like maybe a monster with ears or some shit. I don't know, but we're almost there. We just got you know, a couple more loose ends. I like to push as much fabric in there as I can. All the pressure it gives give it plenty of time to dry out all the way through, all the way through. I, I like to call it bone dry. Because I literally want it so freaking dry that the, the, the dye, it, it'll literally suck the dye into the shirt when it's nice and dry. And for, for all everybody tuning in, I really appreciate y'all. This has made my night. I'm seeing a lot of people on here. It's really cool. I'm going I'm to be doing this every week. 
So if you guys want to tune in and see what I'm going to show you all, I appreciate it. It's enough action on there. I'm going to get in here. You can do this either kind of symmetrical or like we did the mask. You can, you know, be lazy about it and kind of keep all your nice uniform pleats and just do that like that. And then, then you know, you can just dye it across and you got, you know, wigwag action almost. You can come in here, smash it up like I'm going to do. I'm going to scrunch these up. I'm just going to try to push all the fabric I can in between these pleats as I can to break up the uniformity and give the shirt a little bit of chaos. Is this what it, that's what it needs? A little bit of chaos. Throw this all together. Throw the sleeve on there. All while pushing down. Now, we can even set the brick on there real quick. Let it keep its form. I'm going to come over here and do the same thing over here and just push all those pleats in here to the corner. I'm great on camera. Thanks, Michael Johnson. <laughs> oh, I squish that all up. I'm going to get that all in here and do this and just kind of do the same thing. Now, I did that so that I can do it, kind of finish up nice and quick here. Sometimes I'll sit here and just pick into each pleat. Surface area down flat all the way through and come all the way in there. I'm going to go ahead and hit that corner. Pull everything here into the middle. Pop it. I'll even push it in there a little bit. Make sure it goes exactly where I want it to go. It's chaos. I don't know what it's going to end up like over here, but I got a good idea. The steel block, it's a, it's a three quarter inch by four by four inch. I don't know. It probably weighs a, a good pound or two. Like I, I can move this around and it is not letting that thing go anywhere. Where are you going? Nowhere. All right, there we go. Nice, everything's stuck there. Now I can come over here, pull this off. It's still pretty much in place. When I've got a piece of fabric that's kind of moving like that, I want it to go, I'm just gonna kind of squeeze this in, push that down, and that's gonna be my first spot for band, is securing that ornery bastard. Now I don't gotta deal with them anymore. I don't want I wanna pull my tail out of there. I don't want that tail to get stuck underneath the band. Cause it it'll it'll carry dye across that sinew and it will leak into where you don't want it to leak. Okay, Kara, these rubber bands are size 32. You can find them in bulk on Amazon.com. When I drop the tutorial, I'll have all the affiliate links that you all want to find exactly what I use. I'm going to go through and pull them all out and figure all that out eventually. I'm trying to learn how to do business as I go and learn how to untie rubber bands as I go as well. Wow, that is really difficult. But they're like this for a reason because I take them off really quick. And I reuse them. I've got some of these. I've got some of these rubber bands that I've had for the last two years. I'll just go up to Office Max or Amazon and get a pound bag. It costs like eight bucks for a pound, and it's like two or three hundred rubber bands. All right. So that's the guitar. You can tie up a couple more loose ends, but that thing is not going anywhere. There we go. That's the guitar. And Travis, I'm glad that you have brought up this shirt because uh, I'm also going to show you guys how to do the dropper. So for those of you that have kept tuning in, we've kept about 45, 50 people. So I appreciate you all sticking with me. Um, uh, but for sticking with me, I'm going to show you guys how to tie up this dropper. So it's, uh, it's, it's another, you know, moderately difficult one. And uh, 
It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. I love the shirt. I appreciate you, Travis, for bringing that up. I almost forgot I was going to do that. So once again, I'm going to reach into my bag. I'm going to pull out one of my medium size comfort colors. Man, they're nice and soft, too. Those feel nice. All right, there. And like I mentioned before, I get these from shirtspace.com. They don't pay me to say that, but, you know, they send me some free shirts here and there, so I'm very grateful, very grateful that they, you know, do that. And they attach a few free shirts and say, hey, tell people where you get your stuff. So I do. All right. So I'm just going to lay this shirt out nice and nice and flat. Just try to get it even through the corners here and make sure that my armpits are nice and crisp. They come to a good center here. I don't have anything bowing over. That's a good starting point for something that I'm going to tie in half. Oh, oh yeah, Kathy? Well, I, I, I'm probably going to have this one available eventually. Like I said, I let this stuff dry for like two weeks. So the one I'm going to dye tonight is like a 2X that I've had set up ready to go. All right, before I do this, we get going. Uh, step over here off the camera. Mm. Totally didn't just take a nice sip of beer. Anyways. <clears throat> Doing the dropper, I'm going to go ahead and fold the shirt lengthwise from top to bottom. As you can pretty much see from the shirt, it's a... Uh, it's a pair, it's a, whatever, it's, an, it's a fold and a half lengthwise. Man, that, that came out terrible. It's symmetrical. That's the word I was going for. All right, so I match up both of the corners from the bottom of my shirts, and that I push down to get the truest center, the most basic center that I can, and I keep my finger there, and I just throw those back. They usually pop back. And I grab it, put my other finger underneath it, grab it on top, and I find the middle of my collar by really just looking where the center of the, the back tag is. And I'll pull it up and really just hope that it's nice and square. But there's ways that you can check it. You can grab your shirt, and then these seams will match up nice. And if those seams match up nice, your back tag should pull out and stick up something like that and it will stay and you can fold that in half and you'll have that nice in half so that's how you know you got a nice true center shirt so the back tag mat goes like that as well now bottom of that's nice and square and get that and I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay this down I'm not gonna fuss with the sleeves yet I can let those kind of sit there ghost or something behind me. I got my back door open. <clears throat> and here we go. go. Nice and even. I don't have any ripples in here. I've got enough space over here to my shoulder. And I'm not going to use this space, but sometimes if you need to, you can like pull this back and you can really like tug this all the way out. And you can get flat all the way up into these corners just by pulling all this little bit of a shirt meat out. You can get in there and mess with it if you really want to. But I don't really care today. Sometimes I need to when I'm doing something cool. Put up a corner all the way up in there. But I can get all that surface area on the shirt. Now, now we have to draw the dropper. I have this cool little 8-inch ruler that I found that's just pretty much perfect. And it has been kind of my thing. I'm going to line that up. <clears throat> here to here it's about one inch wide so when you flip it in half it's gonna be it's gonna be two inches so I'll go from the bottom of here up to the top all the way up to the top and if I got a little more space I'm gonna try to get as good of a circle all the way around up here and then try to still get a nice perpendicular line that doesn't like come back in and cave back down because I don't want it to look like a heart so I want to make sure that that's as, as much of a semicircle as I can get and that it 
comes up flat right here just enough to make sure that it's not like going to give yourself a dimple now this dropper i'm going to come down here and i'm it's usually got about a 60 degree angle i'd say when i'm coming down on there 45 60 degrees and then i'll leave just enough space and i'll kick it out just a bit and again perpendicular line and that's going to be pretty much the, the, the top to the bottom of my dropper. I'm going to come over here and then come about an inch and a, inch and a quarter out and let this thing stick out. And that's how I'm going to get my, what is this, the cap of the dropper. I'm trying to keep this as perpendicular as possible. Always. Now, since I don't want this to look like some weird little cross, I'm going to give it a little more space down here. Let me make sure this is a burly cap. Right there. So I don't want this getting a mistake. This thing's going to look like a freaking medicine dropper if it kills me. You can check and make sure that it's square if you want. I usually do because I used to calibrate stuff and now I'm a stickler. All right. Gives us a lot of fun angles. Now I'm gonna just remind myself that I want this to be darker. And if you color inside, you'll be able to see exactly where that is, so you can know where your folds are and see what you're doing. So when you see your fabric all up, so we know the top side of that is gonna be black or another dark color. We're good. All right, the fun part, the drop. Drop is pretty much like a heart, but without it coming down. So we're just going to try to get as much of a circle as we can. And we're going to taper it back up. So we're going to try to do this all in one. Try to get that nice and perpendicular. I'm going to circle. I'm going to put my hand where I feel will be at a good spot for the center of the circle. Just Bring that up as close as you want to that dropper. That's what we're going to have. Now, come down here, clean up that circle, make it look like it's round. Nice fat drop because everybody needs a proper size dose. I feel kind of weird because I'm just sitting here talking to like this computer, like no one's even in here, and I'm just sitting here talking. So it, it feels kind of goofy being live. So I appreciate any feedback if I'm not sucking. All right. Now, with these pesky corners, <laughs> with these pesky corners, I'm going to try to get this and I'm going to do like I did on those pickups. I'm going to push down in that corner like a 45 and I'm just going to catch that right there and that's going to determine about how high I got my pleats. Now the bottom of that is going to match up with that so that's going to be nice and flat and then we go here and then we get as straight of a line as we pull the top up there and push the bottom down. Try to keep that all nice and square, and the pleat should match up about right. Let's see here. Get a little bit on this side. All right, there we go. Just as, make sure that they go on the bottom, match up. This is kind of a tough part. It can bow and be weird if you don't keep this perpendicular. So if you need to like push up at the bottom, from the bottom as you're doing it, readjust the shirt, pull everything down nice and straight. So it's kind of like, like when you're applying a spine on the back of a shirt, you just want it to be as clean as possible. If you want that to be like your thing, you want them to stack up all nice. All right, cool. So I caught that corner down here in the bottom. But I really want this line to be up anyway. So I'm going to... Just kind of tuck this 
as I go and make sure that I can turn that corner and then try to resume that same height of pleats. I want this line out so that I can come back and fix it here in a minute and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Get that 45, get one side and then flip the rest of that way. Make sure that's clean and keep that perpendicular. Should be able to flip that bad boy up and catch that corner again since we caught that. There's two ways to do it. There's this the way where you kind of pinch it and get it going again. Or there's that other one where you have to throw it up underneath there and just turn it just like this. Uh, what's the significance of the dropper? Well, I mean, everybody needs to take their medicine, right? You know, and they got these things called head meds. And uh, this, this day in history coming up here soon is called Bicycle Day. Very, very uh, awesome holiday. Go ahead and Google that if you're not in the know. Bicycle Day. Um, uh, it's the day that we celebrate head meds. So the dropper is just an applicator in a form that I've never un understood or gotten. So I don't know anything about this. I just think it's cool and droppers are cool. Oh man, if you can hear the background, Markel, Mama Possum is ushering my kids to stay out of here and get clean and get right. Appreciate her so much. Um, uh, <clears throat> something we could talk about since we got a few of y'all. Um, uh, we, by we, Markel mostly, has organized a bi-weekly meal for local vulnerable, uh, food vulnerable community members and we do our best to uh, bring the best food that we can, you know, and serve our community. It's really nice. It's, uh, it's become a, a fun every other weekend event that challenges us in new ways. And it's fun to overcome new challenges and, you know, make sure that we get things done right and everything, no matter what our problems are that we're dealing with, you know, people got to eat, you know. Got to give them some food. And there's a couple other local organizations that feed on different days. So it's really nice that so many people here in the Baton Rouge area really do what they can here and there to reach out. You know, help out some people. But she has an organization which is called uh, MORE. It's M-O-R. It's Meals Outreach and Resources here in Baton Rouge. And she has a group, if you'd like to join and check that out, you can uh, join that. Uh, I don't know if she's watching. She may be watching, but if somebody could link more Baton Rouge in the comments so people know that you can check that out and see what we're up to. Um, that's where we uh, display our free food tapestry that I made a few weeks ago. It was kind of fun. All right, so we uh, tied off and we secured our dropper. We got a nice straight line. Now I've got these two lines right here that run into it. And I wanted to keep those out and I'm gonna leave those out for right now, but I wanna make sure that those come all the way out. So I'm gonna pull those up, make sure that those separate. And we're gonna come back to that here after we get this drop secure. Um, Markel's been doing this for a good three years. Um, we've been together for a little, about a year now, a little over a year now. And it's, it's been really awesome to see how the community responds to her and how much of an impact that she really has on this community. And, uh, she's a blessing. Like, I love this woman. She's fucking really cool. 
and uh, she does really cool things. And y'all should check out her Instagram page. She is Neon Kitty Art. Go check her out over on the Instagram. She paints cat butts. That's why I do the cat butt shirts. Okay. So, getting uh, back to this, we're doing a drop. Now, we're trying to make sure that that line is nice and boxy, nice and square, uniform, about the same height as our pleats before, so that we can have as much uniformity and cleanliness as we can. Try to make sure that everything lines up here on the right side, and we keep everything nice and square and boxy. You can readjust as you go, or afterwards, or, you know, kind of, kind of feel it out. It's not easy. It takes a little bit of tries. You got to feel for the texture. Uh, you, you get you get a little bit of experience through experimentation, which is where I, the direction I kind of hope. You know, I see a lot of y'all go. I, you know, it, it's going to be cool to see a couple guitars out there here soon, some droppers and stuff. But you know, take the little techniques, the little tidbits, and turn that into something that you can do. Now we're getting up close to this and you, you probably, I don't know if you can see, you probably can't see, but I've got one more pleat to go. Now I'm going to pull that up and then I'm going to push down and I'm going to get this other line all the way over to the left as I can and that's going to be my last final point up here at the top. And since that's so close, I'm going to pinch from the other side and I've actually got the top side and the bottom side pinched out, ready to rock. And here we go. Get that sinew secure. I cannot believe I actually didn't have to rewind the sinew. It's pretty cool. And then here we go. We get up underneath there. And I get all the way I can to over here. And I will use my tweezers to put that line exactly where I want it. I'm going to get my finger in there. Hope this doesn't flop out. Ah, cool. That first one's usually the hardest. Getting in there. Pull it tight. Here we go. Oh man, thank you guys for, for joining me. This is really cool. I, I feel really special that so many people have joined in and checked us out and spent so much time with us here. We're about an hour and a half in and still a lot of y'all hanging around. It's really cool. So I wrapped it four times, got it nice and nice and tight. Now I'm going to come back through there and do that over and over again until I feel like I'm content and I've got enough central pressure from the sinew that I'm going to get the proper amount of resistance so that no dye leaks in. I'm not content yet. I want to get that a little bit tighter. There we go. Oh. That feels good. I like that. That's 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 got enough tension in there. That, there's nothing going anywhere. All right, so this is kind of a big little trick. All right, so first off, I want to get my sleeves in and uh, inside out. So I'm just going to reach my hand in here, grab this by the back collar, and just kind of push my hand all the way through, just very effortlessly, right? And just pull this through like that. Now I'm going to bring these the bottom seams from both of the sleeves and try to bring them as pair, as close together and pinch them together and then I'm going to pull with my thumb and try to get them nice. I want to get these things as nice and even as I can. See? Nice and in there. <laughs> nice of you to join us, Nikki. I um I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I've got some good footage I think on my camcorder. I'm gonna hope to add this to uh YouTube here soon in the form of tutorial. If you feel like you got some value, you know, little tip jar, kaidies at gmail.com, you know, send me a little bit of a couple coins on PayPal would be really cool. So with that sleeve, I pushed all the way down on the inside. I'll pull that all the way back out real quick. And I just really just went right back into the center and just scrunched it and just kind of kept it all to the center. I'm trying to keep it all down flat like I want to. And I'm really just going to come in here and come all the way across here 
I want to keep this all uniform. I'm not ready to band this all off yet, but I'm going to do what I call the cross tie. Now, this cross tie is a money maker. This will save you time and lines. A lot of times you could just, I could sit here, I could throw a hemostat on here, which, you know, I probably should. You know, I don't know if I should show you guys. I, I'm on Facebook Pay. Yeah, that works for me. Um, uh, if I, if I, do you guys want to know the cross tower or should I just do this to the hemostat and move close? Nah, fuck it. I'm not going to make y'all wonder. I'm going to give you guys all the value I can. So I'm going to take this line and I'm going to fold it up once. I'm going to get it nice and clean line. And it's, I'm going to tie a sinew cross real quick. I'm going to do this twice. So I'm going to get this. I'm going to throw this over here so I don't get too messed up. Oh. So I don't need a whole lot of sinew here. I just need to get a nice tight Nice tight line right there. Come back. Give a little bit of tension on there. Get back in that channel. That's all the signal I'm going to get out of this. So I'm going to just let that be. Get that down there in that channel as well. Nice and tight. All right. So since I need more sinew, got this on a little roll. So I'm just gonna sit here, roll this up, wind this up. So I got just enough sinew to do this again. I appreciate you guys so much. All right. Now I've got enough for. Maybe two more ties. So really what I'm going to do with this cross tie is I'm going to isolate the, the three parts into perpendicular ties that cross over that that I don't need to do a sinew line. And it comes out nice and clean. It's what I do on my mushrooms as well. So if you guys tuned in for that live video, I did that with the mushrooms to get a clean line. So I'll come over here, find that other line, get a nice little fold in there, and then press it back into that channel. Find your little groove thing again. And then pull that tight against that channel. Get it snug in there. And you'll have three defined spots on here. The one I'm going to dye here in a little bit. The one I'm about to dye here in a little bit is going to be, um, uh, I did that with hemostats. So you're not going to see this cross tie line. Well, it seems I didn't get this one tight enough, so I'm going to go ahead. Take that out. I'm going to have these nice lines, whether this shirt likes it or not. I'm really just trying to get these lines secured, and I'm going to come back over it and then tie another line over it, and it'll secure those lines. Cool little trick I found a few weeks ago when I was doing my mushrooms. Thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you very much. All right. Get that nice and secure both sides. I've got this sticking out. I don't know if you can see that. You got it. All right. Then nice and tight and cut this off. 
hopefully I can still find my line. Here we go. Sometimes it gets a little tough to find the other side of that line. But I'm going to come back up here. And I'm going to tie around this again. And that's going to secure those two cross ties. It looks ugly right now, but I promise you this is going to be really kind of cool here in a second. You'll get it in a second. You'll be like, oh, okay. Now I'm just finding my original line that I tied to get from the top of the bottom of the dropper the first time. Go there, try to make sure that you seat those lines right back and you're not folding up other pieces of the, the gar garment into that line because then you'll end up with weird lines that you don't want. Kind of ugly, kind of ugly, but that's okay. You kind of get the idea. You can kind of see it here on the bottom. I just retrace that line. <sighs> Don't let it slip out of there. It looks a little messier than it needs to. It works a little better on the mushroom. But this is going to give us a nice crisp line. I'll show you guys here in a couple weeks. You'll see what I'm talking about. One more time to make sure that, that is so bleeding tight that you'll know what I'm talking about. Now, here's the cool part. I still have to, tie, I still have to scrunch up this shirt. All right. Looks all crazy, everything's all bunched up right here. That's not right, we can't do anything with that. So we're not gonna. I'm gonna come back in here and I'm gonna take out that that line. Wiggle that in there, don't, don't force it. I'm gonna cut that sinew line. I don't want it anymore. You served your purpose. Now be free, You're done. Take that rest of that. Get as much of that crap out of there as you can. Just trim that up. Th thanks for joining us, Travis. I really appreciate you stopping in there. All right, so cool. Now we have our three spots that have been cut off and then now I cut that off and it's not there anymore. So if you if you caught that, you caught a cool little cross tie. Let's see here, what side were we on? Yeah. Okay. So take all that, throw that in the trash can. We're done with the sinew. Alright. Looks like I have that backwards. Put this down here, pull these sleeves back out. Alright. Some more rubber bands. All right, I had intended to dye a little bit here, so I'm gonna pull out the dye. So it's gonna give me a few minutes to take a break. I'm gonna make y'all watch Joe Rogan with some trippy lights while I step out after I get this all scrunched up. So once again, we're back at that sleeve. Let's turn that sleeve inside out on itself. There we go. Just kind of keep it and press it, and we're just going to brain it up all different directions. Brain it up over here. Try to get in between those pleats. Make sure that we try to keep these all, all these little brains about the same height, or else we're going to have problems when we start banding it up. Here we go. We got a little brain. Kara, what are you making for dinner? Now I'm all hungry. There you go. Get it all nice and scrunchy. We want about the same pleat height because we're going to try to push it all in the middle again so we don't want this all folding in on itself. Okay, 
綺麗ね。Turn this around. And I like to come from this way down, and I'm just gonna work my way down and just kind of push this all together. I've got it's kind of a, a ladder, a ladder or banding technique, as I'll call it. If you stir fry, right on, right on. That sounds nice and healthy. Oh man, come on, rubber bands. Do 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 do. So it'd be a lot better if Facebook let us like listen to music and stuff without being like, okay, there was a part of somebody's song in there. Now you can't go live for a whole month. Stuff like that. I'm gonna do everything I can to not get, you know, stuck on not being able to go live. If that happens, you know, probably find me over on Instagram. I'll still go live. Can't keep me down. Maybe I'll start an alternate account. Be a rebel. Just go live that all really nilly. All right. So we're going to start off. Now, we get in. We press down as we release these bands. And then we bring our hands in and push down as it kind of comes in. You know, keep it from clumping up and forming up and getting all crazy in there. I'm really stoked because I've got a buddy coming down. I'm not going to say who, but I've got a buddy that uh, I've been really looking forward to meeting and doing some tie-dye with coming here soon. No spoilers, but here in the next few weeks, we're going to be getting down on some cool collaborations and uh, see what rinses out. I'm really looking forward to this. One of my favorite artists. Really cool, get to hang out with people you look up to. All right, see, I've kind of built this ladder and it's helped it all kind of keep it all together as I've worked my way down. All right. All right, now, as I work my way back up the ladder, I'm still trying to keep all the pressure going towards the middle. So I'm gonna use a little bit of bridge mathematics and we're gonna do cross sections. Push that in towards the middle, and we're gonna go the other way. And then we're just gonna kinda of work our way back up. And that should give us a nice, Nice and tight line that's nice and structurally stable. Now, when the tighter it is, <clears throat> in my experience, the, the the better saturation I'm going to end up with. It's going to really get in there <clears throat> and touch other pieces of fabric which will make look cool when it comes out. Work that way back up, like it's straight again. It doesn't matter if it's straight, whatever. All that it matters to me and my style and the way that I do this is that it's flat and I've got as much surface area so that I've got as much ripples or little brain folds or whatever scrunches in there that get the attention of the dye. I like it when my shirts get the dye attention pop pop push like keep going <clears throat> really excited about this next big Bitcoin tapestry that I'm oh man that I'm working on I'm, uh, I'm painting on it and like digitally like reworking nice high resolution images and using uh, this little paint pad to be able to use different art tools to, to paint. So it's really cool. i kind of looking forward to winding down after this later on tonight and sitting there and painting 
a little bit. All right, so we're done. I've got enough structure right here. It's nice and strong. Here we go. We probably, you know, when it dries out, it'll be, it'll be nice and tight. So we know that that's good. I'm gonna come in here, tie up this. We're good with these as long as we just. You kind of want to just isolate that. I'll do like a, a, a double band and a double band again. And I'll just kind of lean this off the edge of the table a little bit. Get my thumbs on either side of these droppers, this first part of the dropper. And I'll pull that together. And it kind of comes together all nice. And you got that nice flat bit right there where you know you've got the good cleats. You got those good cleats. This, these, they're good. You're going to use gray and black on this part, and it's going to lean over and die. You can do the drop a couple different ways. Scrunch it up. I like to do scrunch it up, throw a quadruple band on there, and you're good to go. Or a triple band. Rubber band man. How many of you guys use bands? Are you guys bands or you string? Like a lot of people I know use a kite string, and I guess it's. I guess that's pretty nice and easy to do. Kite string is not maybe easier to take off as well. I don't know. I don't know. Here we go. So that's that. Let's see here. I want to put another band right here in the middle, just because. Cool. Clean this up a little bit. I don't want those strings carrying dye all over the place. You know, here in a couple weeks, whenever I dye this, I'll you know I'll, I'll probably I'll make a point to dye this on here just so you guys can kind of see and follow the project a little bit and show you show you that the it's not I'm not slow on purpose. It's just some of this stuff takes time. Yeah, size 32 rubber bands. The sinew I also get off of uh, Amazon as well. It's like Treasure Gurus or something. What I really look for is tensile strength with the um, uh, sinew. So I want it to be um, good enough. I, I look for what, 75, 75 pounds? 75 pounds of pressure is what I can be able to do. All right, so I'm going to go and work on transferring the dye over here. And I'm going to take a quick little break. I'm going to go ahead and break this down into two videos. So if you guys bear with me and give me about, you know, five, ten minutes to reset this up and uh, bring in my dyes and get ready to sit here and dye um, uh, the projects that we just did. Now this is these are the shirts that we did. I did the guitar, and then I did the dropper. Now I've got another guitar and a dropper that I need to do, and I need to check on and see which colors I'm doing on that. Because or I might just do the you know what the guitar that I've got to do is a custom, and I've got to make sure that I've got the right colors mixed beforehand. And I don't think I do, but I do have the rainbow, and we're gonna do the dropper. So I'm going to go ahead and reset this, and uh, I will check back in with you here. It's 8.50 now, Central Time. I will be going right back live by 9 p.m., unless you guys just want to sit tight, and I'll just throw on some fancy lights, and you can just look at Joe Rogan. Maybe that. You want to just do that? We'll just do that. All right, I'm going to take this and this, and I'm going to leave you here with Joe Rogan. All right, I'm going to take lights off for just a second and hang out with Joe. And I will be right back.
All right, I'm about about to get in here again, Carl. Thanks for joining us. You're about to catch the tail end where I die the uh, dropper. About ready, set. All right. <laughs> Fun little intermission. Got that light just for that. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do this right here on the table. I'm going to go ahead and clean up my little space, throw my rubber bands back, throw my sinew back, make sure I got, you know, clean space. Because, you know, I'm going to work with a clean space. Who doesn't? <clears throat> Nice white towel. Get the whitest towel that you can. Now, I usually die on a rack, so this is going to be kind of new to me. So, bear with me. Now, I got a few parts that I want to point out. Now, I've got my drop and then my dropper. Like I said, I didn't do the cross tie on this, I just went ahead and tied a hemostat and then tie down the hemostat to make sure that it was uh, it doesn't pop off because if you guys use hemostats a lot of times you'll see the pop off and that sucks um, uh, if you've ever had a hemostat pop on you that hurts but anyway we're gonna get into it now I always usually do this where it's facing like this for me well I'm gonna go ahead and do that anyways so that you guys I'm gonna give it to you how I do it now my biggest thing is I want to keep these two things from touching so I'm gonna hit it with mist gray on the bottom of the dropper first ooh these have been sitting here for a minute I'm gonna go get some spray real quick I'll be right back two sprays. I got soda ash and regular water. Now I just want to break the surface so I'm just going to give it a spritz. Let that kind of soak in and it's going to do some work right there. Now there we go and that just kind of drinks into it a little bit. Sometimes you just need a little bit of water to break the break the fabric and that'll soak right on through get that we're gonna hit it with some I, I call it like just darker gray it's a different tone of gray get the top of there and down the side of there and 
and then I'll finish that up with black. I'm gonna come over here. I do robin's egg blue for the inside of the dropper, and then you know, so so kind of mimics liquid water, liquid water. All right. So I'll give it a good space about there. It'll soak in on both sides. And then I want to come in with turquoise to get a little bit closer to the line with that. Let it soak in and run. You know, let it do a little bit of soaking. And then I got, I think this is cobalt blue, a little darker blue. I'm going to put that right up there snug against that line. And we have dyed the first half of this. All right. So it's all downhill from here. Pretty, pretty easy. Now, I'm just going to take yellow and just kind of run it and ruin this shirt. And I want to meet it right here in the middle. Right there. Reinforce my line. Yellow's a good blender. I like to lay this one down first because he likes to get down into the shirt. And it likes to take his sweet ass time. Let it go first. Just let it drink up all that yellow. Now we're going to find out which way we want to go with this. And since I've got blue on the dropper right here, I'm probably going to go orange on the bottom. I don't want that. I don't want to put blue right next to blue. So I'm going to hit this with a little bit of light orange to get that side so we know which way we're going. And then we'll put some fuchsia on there, and then we'll use orange in between the, the fuchsia and this daffodil. This is daffodil. It's kind of a, a richer hue of ochre, if you will, of yellow. And it blends really well into the deep orange that I'm going to use. But I'm going to lay down the fuchsia first. Now, some dyes can sit for a minute, some dyes can't. Reds are notorious for dying, so I always mix fresh reds. This is the one that I will stick the hot dog water into the chemical mix on it and see how it kind of just goes right into it. It's got like a little chunky on there, it soaks right into it. Hey Danielle, I haven't seen you in a minute. Hope you're doing well. Come down there, and we're gonna to want to get over here to our line and make sure that we're not making this drop purple. But we're totally gonna to put purple over here on this side. It's gonna be the last thing that we do. Let that sit, kind of leach into our fabric a little bit. Now I'm going to come over here and do kind of similar thing with turquoise that I did with the fuchsia. I'm going to let that kind of sit here and bleed in. And we're going to get kind of close over here. Now when I mix turquoise, I will use uh, other additives. Uh, sodium sulfate is one. And I always mix my dyes with distilled water. I wish somebody would have told me that like two years in, but the distilled water made a huge difference in the vibrancy of my work and everybody else's work who uses distilled water. All right, there we go. And this will also drink up some more purple. So we'll have purple on the top and the bottom of the shirt. We'll come in here with a little bit of green. Green runs, green runs. So we're not gonna get too much green in there. Green will always run into orange too. They are heavy colliders. So after I get done doing this, I'm gonna put down some more yellow. And kind of create like a, a bleed zone. 
That's why I got that daffodil down there as well. I'm gonna use daffodil to kind of help bleed that. Daffodil and green don't collapse, don't clash so hard. So you put those down, the, the lemon yellow's already gone down into the shirt a little bit, and then the daffodil's gonna kind of sit on top. And it's not gonna mix the oranges too bad. Just try to keep that orange up against the fuchsia. Will not turn the fuchsia orange. There we go. And you can be as meticulous as you want. You can really sit here and make this, you know, painstaking and take, you know, two hours to dye. Or you can kind of keep an eye on how much dye you're putting into the fabric and know through experience how long it's going to take some of this dye to drop in there. I'm glad I didn't start another live stream. I bet you only like four of you guys would have would have caught this. I'm glad you guys are all back. We're good. All right, so now we go. Now a way to, to, to catch saturation, you're not gonna see it through this, but there's these little fuzzies if you don't put enough dye in there. I've got that on the edge of my blue over here and I've got that on the edge of my fuchsia as well. I'm gonna use this opportunity to put down some purple and fill that shirt up a bit. Now, when it's got enough dye in it, it, it'll it'll get rid of those fuzzies and all the fuzzies will kind of stand up against the shirt and you won't even notice just did the rainbow pretty quickly hope you guys caught that because all we're gonna have to do is flip it over and then match this and then we're gonna be good to go. There's a couple fuzzy spots over here on the blue. I'm gonna put some purple and it'll blend in with the blue a little bit. But I'm also gonna come back over here and put some more turquoise down to make sure that that kind of soaks in pretty good. All right. Purple will come back over the blue and it will soak in. So you wanna make sure that you get a little bit more turquoise down over that so that it doesn't so it doesn't bleed what's the blank spot there's one blank spot on my opposite side that's okay because I'm gonna get it on the other side you see I see some little blank spots over here that I didn't want to put orange up against purple so I'm gonna put a little more fuchsia in here and let that run up into the orange It's okay, there are no spots that are going to get away from me. I'm going to go ahead and hit that right there. Boop. Got it. All right, now I'm going to hit just this one spot with black. I usually wait till the very end for black, but I want to get just this, this cap in there. And I'm just going to put it in there just enough for it to soak up all the fuzzies. I'm gonna let that be. Now, I don't usually mess with towels, so I'm gonna go all out and I'm gonna bring up another towel. Yeah. And we're just gonna set that on top of there. And we're gonna flip this bad boy over. And get rid of this. Yeah, I don't need all that. Okay. So that's neat, that's cool don't have a whole lot more of this so I'm just gonna run that over here and I don't even know if these if this matches up right but let's, let's hope it does because we're out of that that color is gone let's get this let's get that robin's egg and hit it up on this other side right here just enough to get the fuzzies to go away you just want to get rid of the fuzzies. And the fuzzies is what's going to let you know that you got some white space in there. Here we go. Now I'm very, very 
meticulous not to to let the lines cross. But if if a little bit of dye does cross over your line, it's okay. Because we're going to put black down on top of it anyways. Just a little bit of soda ash. It's just to help moisten the fabric, to give the dye a little bit more of a chance to mm -hmm. run in there. Now I'm going to use an alternating color of purple, so it's a darker purple. I'm going to let that kind of bleed in on top of this and let it blend in with that red. There we go. There we go. Let's, I don't want this orange anymore. Do that dark purple over here before we run out of it. Here we go. That's going to look rad. I'm going to go with this dark hue blue that I used on the inside of this drop. I'm going to do that out here as well. And that will butt up against the uh, turquoise and give it another shade of blue. Maybe pretty red. And again, I really just put down just enough dye until I've seen it saturate into the shirt. Hopefully we're not saturating it over. Now this is a little bit of a, a teal. I'm gonna put this bad boy down right next to that blue. And it's gonna run into the yellow a little bit. We haven't even put down. Cool. We got just enough yellow to come down and meet that in the middle and finish saturating and let that blend up in between these colors. There we go. And we get just enough dye in there to, we don't want us to drench it to where it's dripping through a whole lot. It's okay for it to drip through, but you just want it just to make those fuzzies go away. I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean it up a little bit. I'm only doing that online because really, like, my real dye station's a mess. It's a mess. It's really, it's, it's, if anybody wants to come and help me clean, that would be awesome because my dye station's a mess. All right, so that's all the dye I put into it. Let's put a little more gray over here just to, to make it a little more uniform. But now it's time for the black dye. See here, look around. Make sure I don't have any more fuzzies. I got a little bit more red I want to put down over here. A little more red. Put it over that right there. There we go. There's just a little bit of fuzz on there, so we'll just make sure it covers up. Maybe even give it orange a little more of a chance, even though I don't fuck orange. I really don't like orange. Ah, there we go. Okay, cool. I like to spray a little bit of soda ash before I do another layer of dye. We're going to do this first side. And I'm going to go ahead and have this shirt, this other towel, nice and ready. For this mess that we're going to have. Get all this dye over here. We're about ready. We're about done. Oh. Okay, it's okay. All right, all right, let's see here. Okay, all right, black, the last thing, makes very thick. I'm gonna hit my lines, put just a little bit of black on there, just enough black on there, just a, just a bit of it on each side of the lines. And then I'm gonna go I'm just going to cover this bad boy just, just, just a little bit. Like, I don't want this to soak in super heavy. I'm not trying to drench this and make sure that all the black dye goes all the way into it. I make sure that I, I, I mix it 
four times thick just on basic but a lot of times I'll throw in a little extra like I'll do like 10 scoops black dye is more expensive and you use four times as much so you ever hear that because of that we're gonna go ahead and flip that bad boy over that could have been cleaner Ugh. whatever that black's gonna soak it on into that other side of the towel I'm gonna go put this on the rack here in a second get the black in there don't overpower it on your design but then yeah just really quick and easy you really just want to make sure that the black is kind of soaking into some of these cracks that you've made with your scrunches you don't want to overpower it you don't want like this like over black but just putting it in there making sure that you get a little bit of this into each little crevice and stuff will will give this the the, the accents that you see on mine here we go Ooh. and we're done um i really appreciate you all taking the time out of your evening to spend you know a good two hours with me i hope you guys learned something if you did you know let me know uh, i need some critiques here um I'm going to hope to do this every week, so I'm going to come up with different things to talk about. Um, uh, if I see some big questions that need answered, I'll come back and I'll, I'll maybe see if I can make a video of it. And the, the whole point afterwards is for me to be able to uh, put it on a camcorder and then put it on a YouTube as well so that other people can come back and see it later too. But I'm glad that you took the time and joined me. And I'm going to leave y'all with goodbye. I'm going to go ahead and put this on a rack. Let it sit for 24 hours and I'll rinse it out tomorrow. I can already tell you it's going to come out looking something similar to this. With all the yellows and the reds down in the bottom. And you see with the zigzag kind of idea right there. It kind of comes all the way around. And then the blue's on top. Because you got a blue drop down here. I don't want to put blue down here. Anyways, thank you. If you guys found some value, you know, tip your bartender. Thank you.